Being a freelancer or contractor is easier than a CEO. Your mindset is in a different place and you're looking to build a craft that supports your lifestyle and to meet your financial needs. But what happens when you're ready to build a true standing business and grow your team so that you can reach more and impact more? Then not only do you need to step into your CEO role, but also into what your team and business will need from you the most, leadership. What you envision, speak about, and the way you empower your team all stems from you. In this video, we're going to cover the top five essential elements to empower your CEO leadership and why it is the next step in building a business beyond yourself. So stay tuned. Welcome back to my channel, the best place for creative CEOs, consultants, and contractors. If you're brand new here, I'm Teresa, operations coach consultant behind LoopLink, and I'm here to help you complete the loop in your business operations and expand your agency with excellence. One of the ways I help you do that is by helping you shift from a CEO dependent to a systems dependent operation by leveraging your technology, techniques, and team. One of the things that my clients have benefited from the most is gaining the CEO mindset that they've developed throughout our work together. Because as you continue to grow, it all stems from you, the CEO, the boss. Leadership in any business begins with the CEO. CEOs are the executives that encourage and empower their people to become leaders that can develop an informidable team at all levels and therefore increases the chance to be successful. So there are poor leaders and there are great leaders. There are traditional leaders and collaborative leaders. The difference is vast, and so it's important to know how you want to lead, but also understand the type of leader that you're going to want to be. First and foremost, let's cover why is leadership so important in business. Even if you're a solopreneur, and as long as you have clients or customers, regardless of what services or products you sell, there are various levels of leadership that are required. From every decision that you make in order to move the needle forward, to understanding people's motivations and leaning into opportunities to continuously learn and grow, leadership is the accomplishment of a goal through a team of people. When you look internally to understand the way you lead, the strengths and weaknesses of your leadership style, it will help you communicate better with your team, clients and customers, contractors, and therefore improving collaborations massively. The early days of what your team might look like will be different than when you've grown an agency team. As a team of one, two, or three, it may be a bit more difficult to lead as everyone begins to share the workload and you're still working deeply in the business versus on your business. However, this shouldn't be the reason why you cannot begin to embrace your inner leader and empower your team. I want you to close your eyes for a moment and envision what your empowered team looks like. Are they self-sufficient? Are they a team that works together towards a specific goal? Are they clear on the roles and responsibilities? Do they have autonomy, skills, and the accountability towards their own decisions for your business? Are they resourceful within the boundaries and parameters of your business and brand? That's what an empowered team looks like. So if you want to get to this level, it all begins with you. You are the catalyst to empowering your team. As leaders, we don't do this enough, which is to share the vision you dream of for your business. During team calls, this should be in fact one of the things that you touch base on or start out with so that new and seasoned team members are all on the same page. When your team is aware and acknowledges the vision, then their work becomes easier. They understand with every task that they are performing contributes to the bigger vision beyond themselves. When you share the vision, the team trusts that you, the CEO, is in charge and commands the ship to sail in the right direction, even in the hardest times of the business. Let's touch base on number two, trust with responsibility. The process of empowering your team and your CEO leadership begins with trust. Without trust, you'll never be able to fully let go and allow others who can help steer the ship on your behalf. 
There will be painful challenges along the way, but once you find the competent team members, you'll never want to let them go. Once you trust them, they will have the accountability and responsibility to make decisions within their roles and responsibilities. It shows that they are willing to take initiative as well as be bold and confident in their role. This empowers your team to bring forth their resourcefulness and creative side to be a part of the solution versus just being the executor or frontline workers in your business. An article by Kevin Dom has the key quote that really stood out to me. It's not only the experience that a person has in their specialization, but their brave mindset, which allows them to think and take actions that most people probably will not. Do you want your team to be more than frontline workers and to take actions that most people wouldn't? You can make that decision in your CEO leadership and empower that change in your team. Let's touch base on number three. Have you heard of rotten things roll downhill? You can inhibit this by making sure that you always communicate new strategic directions, initiatives, and adjustments through team meetings, notifications, and change management. Of course, you'll always want to communicate sound strategy versus just the whole constant redirection. Many teams that I've come to work with have always expressed change fatigue. This was where change was beyond the constant thing, and so they were never able to gain traction. Instead, allow your team to communicate back to you what's working, what's not working, and have them bring forth a strategy that they'd like to apply or test. This allows you to stay in your CEO leadership and provide support and guidance where it is asked for and motivate your team. As a high C on the DISC profile and an Enneagram 1, my tendencies all point to perfectionism. And so when I began to build my team, I didn't have a very big appetite for errors and mistakes. However, I wanted to raise leaders and so I knew that success is achieved through failures or learning opportunities. I had to learn how to be more giving and accepting in missteps and mistakes. The realistic thing is that things aren't always going to go according to plans. A great leader once said, if your team is not making mistakes, then you need to encourage them to reach higher. Failure is a natural part of evolution and development. It allows us to shape our standardized processes to identify the best way, and it also encourages our team to think with courage. It's not about punishing them for the mistakes they made, but to discover what they've learned in order to excel. I often mention this to my team. It's not about the failures or mistakes, but it's about what we do after with the lessons learned, the knowledge gained, and how we approach it. My rule of thumb, if it's fixable, then there is no big issue. So empower your team to be courageous and not be afraid of falling down. Inspire them to get back up and to keep going. Allow them to apply their corrective actions or recourse towards success. Because at the end of the day, success is together. To empower your CEO leadership, you must help your team to understand the difference between a job and a career. You'll motivate great team members to own the business processes and enhance their feelings of enjoyment and being a true part of the core culture you desire to create. A job is something you simply do and perform in order to live. You're not as wholly invested in it. However, a career empowers your team members to be entrepreneurs in their own specialized focuses. It gives them a great sense of ownership and accountability. It encourages them to step up, show up, and deliver better. If you want team members who's going to be with you for the longest period of time, you'll also want to empower their own learning path. Where do they see themselves growing and doing in your business? Where will they excel in? What are they passionate about? This will also give you an opportunity as a leader to invest in their learning that will open up other opportunities for development within your organization. When you show your team members that you are invested in them as individuals, you'll also boost morale and loyalty. Now you know how to empower your CEO leadership, I want to leave you with a few last words of encouragement. Feedback to your team is super important. Recognize and reward where it's due and a good job really goes a long way. Also encourage your team to have fun. When you build stronger relationships internally, your clients and partnership benefits from it. Most of all, remember that even as the CEO, you can learn a lot from your team as long as you can lean on them and be open to improvements and growth. If you've been feeling a little stuck on how to continue to empower or grow your team, let's jump on a consult call and chat through the roadblocks. Chances are you just need a fresh outlook and an outside perspective to give you some feedback that you know you need to take. 
How do you empower your CEO leadership? What are your biggest takeaways? Leave your feedback in the comment section below. If this video has been helpful, be sure to subscribe, share with a friend and hit the like button so I know to make more videos like this. I'm Teresa, Operations Coach Consultant, and I'll see you in the next one.